Welcome back to Good Morning Tobago on Tobago Updates. Well, viewers, we are now being joined by Miss Kelly Manette, who is here to speak to us about a uh, bio blitz that's happening. Um, something very exciting that's uh, going to be, you know, just about exploring our environment a little bit. Yes, it is. All right, good morning and welcome to you, Ms. Manette. How are you? Hi, Candice. Good morning. I'm very good. Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. Now, let's get started on, first of all, what is BioBlitz? All right, so BioBlitz, it is basically, as the name says, it's a little slice of the biology, the living parts of the environment, and it's basically aimed at allowing persons to become more aware of our biodiversity, and it's also aimed at exploring and finding out new species within a space a specific range, so like a five kilometer range. Um, this has been held worldwide. Yes, so it's like give us an idea of, you know, how prevalent it is, like oh, how, how, how widely is it done around the world? Right, so it is internationally done, but in 2012, it was first done in the Caribbean um, by um, the University of the West Indies by Mr. Mike Rutherford. And they started the bio blitz in Tucker Valley for the Caribbean, so the first in Trinidad and Tobago. And eventually it spread to the little town of Charlottesville. So we eventually had BioBlitz first being done in 2015 in Tobago. So this is an opportunity for not only the specialists and the divers and the naturalists, but everyone to come out and actually become little scientists. So each person gets a chance to look at our marine environment, our terrestrial environment, and get an idea of the count of the species that are found within this area. So this what, year? Yes. Mm -hmm. So why is it so important that you know people get involved? So it's important for us to get involved because we tend to live in an area, we live in Tobago, and a lot of the time we do not really realize what species we do have in Tobago. And this bio blitz, it takes place over a 24 hour period. So this intense survey allows the general public to also get a hands-on view in actually identifying some of the species that may exist in Tobago that we didn't even know was mm. there because of this intense survey. And it also brings some awareness to some of the endemic species or species that may be endangered so that it can now be added to reports and further inform policies and decision-making procedures. And of course, this is open, like I said, it's open to everybody, including students. Yes. So it is open to students, families, um, scientists, anyone who would like to become involved and actually get that hands-on approach, the scientific methods, the, the surveys, and it's going to be held in Buku this year. So this is the second bio blitz taking place in Tobago. It's going to be held in Buku, and it's going to be held on the 3rd and 4th of June. It starts on the Saturday at 12 noon and ends on 12, at 12 noon on the Sunday. On Sunday, there will be a final count of these species that were identified within this five kilometer radius. And it is also going to be culminated with um, displays that the general public will be invited to attend. So it is something that not only brings awareness to the biodiversity in Tobago and more specifically in the Buku area, but it is also something that can add to the scientific data that goes out in terms of reports and making decisions and maybe just informing policy when it comes to the particular area and the species that are involved. Now, we know we are a little bit short sometimes on data here in Tobago. Yes. You know, I mean, give us an idea of how much we are lacking in terms of, you know, knowing what we have in, within our space. Hmm. Well, um, I can't give a quantity, but what I can tell you is that because of the lack of data over a period of time, we have a lot of gaps. So because we have many different environments, terrestrial, land, um, aquatic would be all the freshwater ecosystems as well as our marine ecosystems, 
we do have a severe need for young and upcoming scientists to contribute to this sphere, to gather more data. And this would now inform our decisions. So one of the, the species that um, we're going to talk about at later on is the lionfish. So that is an invasive species that has been in our waters. And it is also something that we do have to put out more education and awareness about to become more informed about. Certainly. Right? No, I mean, and if people are not aware, you know, um, you know, the lionfish, uh, we, we, you've probably heard it spoken about, but the lionfish is one of those predatory fish that literally eats everything in the sea. Yes. And you know how we know that? Because at the Bioblitz in 2015, mm -hmm. there was a lionfish derby in, in Charlottesville. And when, you know, the IMA um, officials, the scientists uh, attached to IMA, yes. they, they were like literally opening up the lionfish that were caught. And you were seeing everything from little lobsters to squid to all kinds of different types of fish. Mm -hmm. All of that within one stomach of a lionfish. Yeah. So those are some of the crucial um, species that we need to identify within an area. And when we do these surveys, it lends to giving more information, not only to the scientists, but for our general public. Because for you and I, we may not even know that there are some species that are found here in Tobago mm -hmm. and they can be identified doing these little surveys in the BioBlitz um, events. Now, of course, we're moving over now to, <laughs> as you mentioned, the lionfish. There's going to be a lionfish derby as well happening at um, base out of Sandy Point Hotel. Right, so that lionfish derby has actually passed. Mm -hmm. The um, lionfish derby that we're looking at coming up um, is going to be at the Castara Fishing Facilities. Right. And that is going to take place on the 7th of June um, in commemoration of World Oceans Day. So this is an initiative out of the THA, as well as supported by the IMA and um, the Castara Village Council. So this lionfish derby is again aimed at now managing the species which has become a threat to our reefs. Mm -hmm. So um, the officials at the THA and the Department of Marine Resources and Fisheries, they will be having prizes as well as you have registration. I believe registration closes off tomorrow at 4 p.m. But the forms are available. They can be downloaded and um, dropped off at Milshiv. So that lionfish derby is really aimed at culling the species mm -hmm. so that we can still manage our reef ecosystem while keeping those lionfish um, numbers managed. Now, give us an idea of what are we seeing in terms of the lionfish numbers within our waters? Oh, so that one, um, I may have to get more information from those experts that do the continuous monitoring, mm -hmm. right? But the numbers, um, I believe, have been increasing significantly. And uh, there has been, as I said, there was a lionfish derby recently last weekend yes. from Sandy Point um, Beach Village. And uh, I think one dive group caught as much as 120 lionfish in their catch. So mm. this was just one group alone. So the numbers have been increasing. And that's why it's important to raise more awareness in terms of how do we deal with the lionfish? How do we deal with the lionfish as humans, as the predators now, because they have no natural predators, or at least no no natural predators so far in our waters. And again, more research is needed to actually back up this and mm -hmm. continue to see what we can do to curb the numbers of the lionfish. Because of course, if we let the lionfish go, um, you know, unchecked or uncontrolled, yes. then we lose a lot of our species on our fish that we like to go on the reefs, on the tours and so on and see. Right. So fish like the parrotfish that um, we tend to see sometimes for sale, those are beneficial to the reefs. The lionfish also consumes the parrotfish. So what we're trying to advocate, there are species, the lionfish, you can eat it, mm -hmm. it can be cooked, it can be one that we hunt as a measure to reduce the predatory effect on the beneficial species on the reef. And lionfish tastes sometimes a little bit sweeter than redfish. It's delicious. <laughs>
<laughs> so will be um, will, will there be a, a cookout also a part of this line fish derby in Kastara? Um, I'm not sure if there's a cookout involved. I can maybe get more information from um, the Department of Marine <laughs> Resources and Fisheries. But I do know that there are plans to have um, maybe a lionfish caravan and also introduce it to the Tobago public as well as the general public as a an additional food source and a culinary delight. Mm -hmm. Certainly. All right. Um, and, and is there supposed to be a symposium coming up? Yes, there is supposed to be a symposium coming up, um, I believe, closer to the 9th of June. Right. So that is, again, with the Department of Natural, sorry, the Department of Marine Resources and Fisheries in conjunction with the IMA, the Boca Reef Trust, Species and a few other partners coming up. So that is also to raise awareness of our marine environment in Tobago and give the public a chance to come in and actually see what can be done and what they can do as well to raise awareness about the marine environment and get a hands-on approach. All right. Now, for people that want to get involved, especially for the BioBlitz. Right. And like, like you said, this is such a great opportunity for our young children. Yes. Who have a little bit of a scientific mind and, you know, just get exposed because there's a whole career world out there. But how can they get involved? All right. So the BioBlitz, um, we have two main partners or organizers. That was the University of the West Indies, Natural Resource, um, Natural and Life Sciences Department as well as the Field Naturalist Club. And may I mention that it is sponsored by First Citizens Bank with sincere thank you. And we also have some other partners, Species, Book Reef Trust, but young persons can get involved by contacting any one of these organizations. Um, you can also contact me at um, 302-6690. And we do have an open invitation for the public to join us on Sunday at the Buku. This Sunday? Yes, this Sunday coming at the Buku Primary School. That's our base camp. And we also have something called the iNaturalist um, app. So you can download the app and also upload any images that you get or you can find within that five kilometer radius. Um, of Buku. So anyone can participate and join us on the Sunday for the final tally. So we open base camp at 11 a.m. Mm -hmm. on Saturday, the 3rd of June. So families are welcome to join us and join in the surveys. And again, they can feel free to contact me at 302-6690 and we can give them more information in terms of how they would like to get involved, what else they can do. But the app is also there that anyone can be involved once it is within that five kilometer radius of the Buku um, site. All right, great. I want to thank you so much, Ms. Manette, for being on with us, for sharing us some of the details. And we, I think we have, we're going to be leaving the program with a little video as to, you know, what you can expect um, coming up soon with the BioBlitz and even the Lionfish Derby. Sunstar.